In the last video, we unboxed an item I acquired from our auction, this beautiful Soyuz spacecraft clock, which we of course immediately took apart. While Ken is hard at work reverse engineering it, I wanted to show you yet another item I got. I got another piece. It's a Seymshan Palisite meteorite, meteorite Partial Slice Specimen Identification Card, so we know exactly from which meteorite that came So this is, we, we go from 40 year old to 4 billion years old There we go, oh, ah, oh Wow. Wow, that's something. It's like sliced and polished. Over. It's a slice. So, this is the inside of a protoplanet or a meteorite that was big enough so that it melted and differentiated. It has all the iron in the middle. So, so that's, and that came from the interface of the core with the mantle. So, you have the iron core and you have some olivine from the mantle. Oh, that's spectacular. That turned out much better than I thought it would. Are you going to put it under the microscope? You bet. And here's a, it's just mirror polish. So this one is just polished. The other one has been polished and etched. So you see the grain and you see that actually, this is, a, there's a crystalline structure to the, to the iron. Oh, that's spectacular. And we might be able to see through the olivine. Yes, we do. A little bit. Can we turn the light? Uh, no, it's because I want this thing to focus, it did. There you go, so you can see a little bit through the olivine. So fellows, this is not from Earth, it's from a meteorite, and all good meteorites seem to fall over Russia for some reason, like this 2013 event in Chelyabinsk. Mine also fell over Russia, we don't know when, but it was discovered in 1967 near Seymchan. This 1968 report has the latitude and longitude and also says it was found in the Yasashnya river. So if I plot that, that's about 150 kilometers from Seymshan and the Yasashnya river is over there. So I suspect that's where my meteorite fell. Right there on our dear earth. But my meteorite is no ordinary one, it's a rare palisite, and it's made of a corrosion-resistant iron-nickel alloy. It's the metal core of an ancient body. If celestial bodies are too small, they are usually in irregular shapes like these uh, small asteroids. But above a certain size, they will eventually melt under the force of gravity and assume the familiar round shapes of our planets and larger moons, uh, such as Vesta, which did a, a good try at melting and is almost round. And when that happens in rocky planets, they differentiate. Uh, the heavier molten iron pulls in the center, the olivine-rich mantle sets around it, and the crust floats on the top. Uh, like in Vesta or actually the Earth. So this is from a, a piece of a protoplanet, basically. A, a meteorite that was large enough that it melted and differentiated, so it had an iron core, so it's a piece of the core. And this is thought to come from the interface between the core and the mantle. And the mantle is like uh, on Earth, rich in olivine. So you have all of them in, in a metal matrix. And then the telltale side that sign that it doesn't come from Earth mm -hmm. is this striations here. So yeah, that's that has been uh that's been etched and it reveals uh, they have a name at least those those large crystal formation. Take a long time to make them. Right, and they only happen if you cool down by a degree in a hundred million years or something like that, right? So so you have to which only and so so this is of alien origin, guaranteed. Right? Uh, this is I saw that's pretty neat. You you have some too? No, I don't have that, but uh yeah. Uh, weigh it is super heavy. Imagine a whole bathroom tiled in this. 
right, that was just well. Th this meteorite was several hundred kilograms, so yeah. they must have had enough to do a bathroom with it. <laughs> and also, it's super rich. I can't remember in what else than iron, but it doesn't rust. There's a very high content of iron and chrome. I think there's a lot of chrome that would make it um that definitely make it stainless but it's or something nickel. else it's Our nickel nickel yeah. it's nickel mm -hmm. it has very very large content of nickel therefore it doesn't rust mm -hmm. and then it has also a much larger concentration of what is better than gold um platinum palladium rhodium unobtainium yeah, this is cause some kind of unobtainium i i, I look it up on, online yeah. uh much more than you can find on earth so you can see through some of the olivine and you can really see the striations, the alien striation. So this is, I don't know if we could date it, but this is from from the formation of the solar system. So this is by far the oldest thing I have. And, and you know, this is must be f 4 billion years old or older, mm -hmm. right before life even existed. So let's give it a shot under the binocular microscope. Fair warning, I am not a mineralogist, so I have really no clue what I'm looking at but it sure looks pretty. This area here seems to have a bit of everything. A greenish transparent olivine in a matrix of amorphous and crystalline iron nickel. Here you can really see the alien iron nickel crystals giving rise to the Widmenstitten patterns. Here's a nice green olivine crystal. Olivine is an iron or magnesium silicate that can also be found on Earth. But wait, there is also another red crystal. I don't know what this is. Probably a silicate with another composition or maybe a weathered olivine. The black streak on the upper left might be Schreibersite, an alien mineral that is not found on Earth, but is known to be present in the same chance samples. Let's try to put it under the metallurgical microscope to see more details. With this microscope's higher magnification, the elongated iron nickel crystals from this extraterrestrial material become very obvious. As you are watching this, remember that these took millions of years of super slow cooling to form, which is kind of mind boggling. Now, transitioning from top to bottom illumination, we can peer through the olivine. This one has an interesting inclusion. It appears to be a perfectly round droplet of something. Maybe some of the molten iron matrix? Anyhow, although I'm not knowledgeable to fully understand what I'm looking at, I find it absolutely fascinating to peer through the core of an extraterrestrial body that formed billions of years ago. This is my uh, immense progression in uh, meteorites. This is the only piece of uh, iron meteorite I owned before. And then I have this little piece of a moon meteorite. This moon meteorite was given to me by my friend Marcel, who you can hear in the background here. Marcel, in addition to being a really nice guy, is an avid collector of space artifacts. And you'll soon get to meet him and see some of his stuff in another video. Yeah, so that's... Marcel always gives me gifts for some reason. So that's a famous one, you say? Because it's, uh, it's a big piece or what? Well, that, that particular one, I guess, was uh, very interesting in a number of ways. And it was very well studied. Uh -huh. so there was a lot of research on it. And there's a lot of fragments of it. Cause it, was, it was a pretty large main mass. Uh -huh. uh, I think it was about 20 kilos or something. Well, this is a six, 694 milligrams specimen. And the, the total weight was total 11,000 grams of the main mass, or the, the original meteorite. So 11 about, kilograms. Yeah, 24 pounds or something. Nice. OK, I, I think that's a nice consolation prize from the AGC. <laughs> uh, at least I got something out of the auction. All right, that's it for this little diversion, but stay tuned as we'll get to see what Marcel bought at the same auction in one of the next episodes. And he did much better than me. See you next time.